So again, all we're going to do is add on to the notes from yesterday, and we're going to talk about the golden rectangle and the golden ratio. So if you have room at the end of those notes, add them on there. If you have to do it on a new page, add it on there. It's not going to be, it'll be like half a page, thereabouts. If you already did it yesterday, then you just get to sit back, relax, and watch. Golden rectangle. So a golden rectangle is a rectangle that can be divided into a square, so a regular polygon, and a rectangle, so we get two pieces, that is similar Ha, huh, hence the reason why it shows up in this notes. To the original rectangle. So, a golden rectangle is a rectangle that can be divided into a square and a rectangle that is similar to the original rectangle. Okay? Now, this particular view, this golden rectangle, is extraordinarily pleasing to the eye. In fact, you will find it in architecture, you will find it in paintings, um, and it just has a very pleasing um, view. There, the Mona Lisa is actually painted with the vision of the golden rectangle, and what it does is it draws you into her face and highlights the smile and also her eyes. And the golden rectangle is what they did. He, he just kept painting. Here's this big rectangle, and then he made a square and a similar rectangle, and then he painted in each of those sections, and it just kept kind of drawing you in and in and in. And you can see in, um, on page 253, you can see a picture of the Parthenon, and it was using the notion of the golden rectangle. The whole thing is a golden rectangle and then you could take part of it and make squares a square out of it and then a rectangle that's similar and then notice that between the columns are the rectangles and those rectangles are similar to the original rectangular facade and then this artist is Modrian and Modrian is very famous for his paintings that include a lot of squares <laughs> and um, rectangles and they also use that idea of the golden rectangle. In fact, if you guys I think the L'Oreal um, emblem on or it's it's uh what I can't even think of the word, that's terrible. Uh, what you see on their packaging is like a Modrion painting and you have red color and blue color and yellow color and then black outlining all of them. Okay? So how they took that pleasing eye and and made it happen over and over again is they had to come up with a value, and that value is called the golden ratio. So let's talk about the golden ratio for just a minute, and then we're actually going to come up with the golden ratio. Now, it, it has nothing to do with gold. We just use the word gold with something that's highly prized, and so this rectangle is highly prized for the way that it appeals to our eyes. Okay, and the golden ratio is this ratio that is so fantastic that it allows us to continue this pattern over and over again. So it is the ratio of the length of the golden rectangle to its width. Okay. So what we're going to do is kind of come up with this idea, and you may be asked to do this derivation, so to speak, to come up with the golden ratio, but you should be familiar with what the golden ratio's value <coughs> is. Okay. So I'm going to, is everybody good? Can I go to the next page? Okay. So we're going to start with a golden rectangle, and we're going to call it rectangle ABCD. And we're going to draw 
this segment EF in such a way that AEFD is a square. Okay? Now I'm going to add some values on here. I'm going to let the width of my original rectangle be 1, and I'm going to let the length of my original rectangle be x. Okay? So if I wanted to describe, because we made a square, that allows me to say the length of AE would be what? 1. What would I say the length of EB would be? Allie? Yeah, the whole length is x, and we've accounted for one of it. So there we go. <coughs> so we're told that this is a golden rectangle, therefore we have a rectangle that can get divided into a square and a rectangle that is similar to the original rectangle. So from that statement of having a golden rectangle, we can get that the ABCD would be similar, and now we have to get corresponding sides. So AB was the length, BC would be the new length. So BC, F, E. Now again, we're told this is a golden rectangle, so that's where I can get this from. This is from the definition of a golden rectangle. Okay, so what do we know about similar polygons? Ellipses. Corresponding angles are congruent, but that's not going to help me with this because we're trying to get to the golden ratio, and it's talking about the ratio of lengths. Okay, so that's where we kind of have to work within that parameter. So, um, Rochelle, I mean, Rachel, sorry. We're going to get our corresponding <laughs> sides are going to be in proportion. So what we need to deal with is the length and the width of both of these shapes. So the length of the original one is AB. Its width would be BC. But the length of the smaller rectangle would be BC, and its width would be CF. Okay, so that's just the corresponding parts. of similar polygons, I should say, let's try that again, it's not parts, it's sides. <coughs> Corresponding sides of similar polygons are in proportion. That's part of that. Okay, now in order to do our math, it's going to be a lot easier to use numbers and variables, so that's what we're going to do. So what is the length of AB again? X and the length of BC would be one. one. Remember, opposite sides of rectangle are congruent. We know AD is one, so BC also is one. And we know that the length of BC is one. And what would be the length of CF? X minus one, right? Because also rectangles opposite sides are congruent. If EB is X minus one, CF would also be. So we get uh, X minus one. So that's just substitution, right? All right, so what can we do now? Yes, yeah, so all we can do is cross multiply. So we're going to do cross products, and we're going to get uh, <coughs> x times the quantity x minus 1 is going to be equal to 1 times 1 or 1. So that's just the cross, oops, sorry, go back to black. That's just the cross product property, means extremes. So I can't really deal when I have parentheses, so I'm going to distribute, and I get x squared minus x equals 1. And um, normally when we do try to figure out what a variable equals and we're in a quadrilateral or quadra uh, quadratic equation, we need to get everything on one side, 0 on the other. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, and I get x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. So again, all I did was subtraction property of equality on that. And if you want, you could say this was distributive property. So then we are stuck with, oh, there aren't factors of negative 1 that add to give me negative 1. So what is my only option with figuring out the answer? 
Quadratic formula. We can't factor this one. So we're going to use our old friend quadratic formula. Can you guys sing the song for me? You're so brilliant. That's awesome. <laughs> so what we're going to do is identify A, B, and C, plug them in, and see what we get. So A is the coefficient of the squared term. B is the coefficient of the linear term. C is the constant. And we're going to plug them in. So we get x equals the negative of negative 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 1, Oop, all over 2 times a, which is 1. So we do some math, and we get 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 4 all over 2. And we get x is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. Now that actually represents two potential answers. It represents 1 plus radical 5 over 2 and 1 minus radical 5 over 2. So let's think about this. What kind of in general answer would you get for the first 1 plus radical 5 over 2? Flint? You would get positive, right? Because the square root of 5 is over 2, it's less than 3. And 1 plus 2 is 3, and you would get a positive answer. But what would you get for the second one? Negative. You would get a negative answer. So we actually have to throw him out because we can't have a negative ratio. That makes no sense. So this is actually the formula for the actual golden uh, ratio that these guys were inherently using when they were building their buildings back in the times of the ancient Greeks, okay? Modrian was in the late 1800s to mid-1900s. And so this is what they were actually using to produce their architecture, to produce their art. Now, that value, if you take the square root of 5, add 1 to it, divided by 2, it does have an approximation that's about 1.618. And so... You could use that as well to help you. So that's really all that the, uh, the uh, golden rectangle is about. All right, that's it.